Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. It's amazing how quick half of the month has passed us by. I would like to just remind you of a few very brief but critical and important points as it relates to where we've arrived to at this particular junction in the month of Ramadan. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they used to pray at Taraweeh behind the Imam that the Amir al muminin al Faruq Umar may Allah be pleased with him put as the Imam for them and he was none other than Ubay ibn Ka'b one of the ulama and hufad of the Quran may Allah be pleased with all of the companions when Ubay used to lead the people in the prayer and other companions would lead people in the prayer they would not do the qunut as it has been authentically established they would not do the dua of al qunut until the 16th of Ramadan after half of the month had transpired then they would start doing the qunut prior to that they wouldn't do the qunut they would just pray the witr and they wouldn't do the qunut uh, after that the Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul has a really good book in this regard in which he deals with all of those narrations and details Hafidhullah Ta'ala and how we should comprehend and understand them and practice them. That's not to say it's haram or an innovation if the Imam chooses to do the Qunut throughout the whole month of Ramadan. It's permissible for the Imam to do what he deems is beneficial to the community. He does it one day, he leaves it the next day, he leaves it for the whole month, he does it for the whole month, but it's always better to stick tenaciously to the athar. So the companions of the Prophet wasallam, they would do the qunut after half of Ramadan was done. The Prophet wasallam also, we're not going to claim that he prayed taraweeh as we know it on a consistent basis. Everyone knows about the hadith in the month of Ramadan we came out a few days and then he abandoned the salat out of fear and have a rahma upon the ummah that maybe the salat will become wajib upon the people and they wouldn't be able to do it and sadaqa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam we wouldn't have been able to do it now especially but anyway the point here is the companions did the qunut as for the companions did the taraweeh in the month of ramadan as for the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it is well known he did al-i'tikaf he did al-i'tikaf the last 10 nights of ramadan and he even did more than that on one occasion from that the scholars of al-islam they said therefore we understand that when the companions begin to do the qunut after the halfway point in ramadan it goes to show that the muslim has to get more serious as the halfway point comes he gets more serious and he does more and he focuses more and he gives his attention even more to increasing the ibadat and the good deeds and actions that he was doing at the beginning in the first half of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said when the last 10 nights came, he would tighten up his waist belt. And that was a way of showing us the seriousness by which he was looking for Laylatul Qadr. So you have to do more. You have to do more. It's not the time to allow khumul and al-kasl. A person starts to become lethargic. A person starts to become lazy because he feels now it's downhill. No, it's still an uphill struggle in that we have to push ourselves even more now. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did even more in the last 10 days. The companions, Radwanullahi Alayhim, they, after the halfway point, they started to make the qunut and they made ijtihad in making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, asking him for the khairat of the dunya and the akhirah, his rahmah, his maghfirah, emancipation from the adab of the jahannam and from the problems that have been created and they have been put up for the people who go into the hellfire, may Allah protect all of us from that. And all of that is in tune with an authentic hadith that we can use in the month of Ramadan and also outside of our lives in other issues. And that is the authentic 
الحديث المصطفى المجتبى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم إنما الأعمال بالخواتيم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said The deeds will be judged by the conclusion Your deeds will be judged by the conclusion You will be judged based upon the last thing that you do So your life, for an example, if a person dies while performing Hajj or Umrah If a person dies while performing the Ramadan and he's fasting He dies after praying Salat He dies after coming home from the masjid Or going to the masjid Or completing the Quran You put whatever scenario of good deeds and actions in the equation that you want You will be judged by the last things that you do So a person who dies while performing Hajj or Umrah he will be risen or he will be risen up yawm al qiyamah making a talbiyah labbaik allahumma labbaik that's how he's going to be raised up because that was the last thing that he did and the opposite holds true the last thing that a person does which is negative then he'll be raised up and he'll be judged based upon that particular thing so the hadith that's from the jawami al kalam of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when it was talking about the qadr the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ridwanullahi alayhi, an Imam and Nawawi put it in his 40 hadith of an Imam and Nawawi because it's from the Jawami al Kalim, the hadith of the As Sadiq wal Masduq. He says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a man would do the deeds and the actions of a person of the Jannah, and then he'll come a hand span, an arm span from the Jannah and what was written upon him from the Qadr will overtake him and then he'll start to do the deeds of the people of the hellfire and then he'll enter into the hellfire and in contrast a man will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire until he comes to the end of his life and he's only an arm span away from the hellfire but then the Qadr takes over or what was written upon him takes over and then he starts to do the deeds of the people of the Jannah and then he goes into the Jannah that goes to show this hadith إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالِ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ So therefore the great scholars of Islam they used to encourage people in the month of Ramadan like Imam Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi He said the horse when the horse is in the race he paces himself the rider, the horse he paces himself at the beginning of the race and then at the middle of the race and then when he comes to the middle of the race he exerts more energy in an effort and in an attempt to win the race he doesn't let up he doesn't let up because he's at the halfway point or he's at the finish line as he gets closer to the finish line he starts to become more vigorous and more serious about winning that race so the imam said ibn al Jawzi. he says so muslim ya abdullah don't allow the horse to be more clever than you to be more intelligent than you shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'a. He said that the ibr, the ibr, the ibra. He said that the lesson is not for a person to focus upon the shortcomings that he fell into at the beginning of Ramadan and all of the things he didn't do and the mistakes that he made. But the lesson or the ibr, it is in how he finishes up the month in a strong and vigorous way. A way that Allah Ta'ala would be pleased with him because إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ So brothers and sisters, Ummah to Islam, let us inshaAllah Ta'ala roll up our sleeves as the Prophet Wasallam used to tighten up his belt by making an ihtikaf and by doing more in the month of Ramadan. Jibril would go over the Quran with him in the month of Ramadan and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam he made it his business to get the most out of Ramadan we're at the halfway point so let us continue to get serious and not to take our feet off of the pedal and our tawfiq is only from Allah azza wa jal wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh